injectable testosterone. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are esters like enantiolin cipionate, a shorter acting uh, propionate. Disadvantages, um, there are peaks and valleys, and you can decrease them by um, more frequently injections with uh, lower doses. That's becoming very, very popular, um, in, in especially in the cash-based clinics. The old school was to prescribe 200 to 250 milligrams uh, intramuscular deep injections every two weeks. The new school thought is 100 milligrams every week or 50 milligrams twice a week. Um, and um, we're seeing not only better efficacy, but lower uh, hematocrit, lower production of red blood cells and side effects by doing that. This is the old school dosing uh, that has been used for the past 30 years or 40 years in this country, 200 milligrams uh, of enantate or cipionate every two weeks. And what happens, as you can tell, is that you peak uh, testosterone, obviously, <clears throat> uh, in the first few days, and then you go back down by day 14. And uh, DHT also peaks, and estradiol also peaks, and then goes down. So many uh, doctors have basically um, been prescribing is the uh, weekly administration of 100 um, or every two weeks, uh, I'm sorry, twice a week administration of 50 to 75, so that we minimize these peaks and valleys of blood levels. So why are esters, why, why and what is the cipionate in and fate, all this stuff? What happens is that unmodified testosterone has a half-life of 10 minutes. That's how long it takes um, for the liver to completely get rid of um, testosterone molecule. <clears throat> so uh, chemists, basically the 30s and 40s, basically 30s, um, attached, uh, um, you know, little like molecules on the, what we call esterification at position 17. You see the testosterone molecule here, and then you start seeing all the different esters, propionate and thacipionate with uh, little attachments that are there, a lot longer than the OH that you see on, on position 17 here on, on the testosterone. Methyl testosterone, by the way, is an oral that's no longer used because of liver toxicity. So by modifying the molecule, it, 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 it makes the body um, not dispose of a metabolized testosterone as fast. So it gives, um, it, it gives the body, um, the, the product, more chance to work. So that's why it's called esters. I don't see uh, some so people think enantate lasts longer than cipionate in the body. Really, we have seen no data to prove that. Propionate is definitely a shorter acting, needs to be injected more frequently than, than testosterone, cipionate, or enantate. And on the canoate, which is here in the bottom, is the longer acting one that can last uh, anywhere from eight to 12 weeks max. The company says longer than that, but I've seen data that doesn't really justify that. Okay, so there's esters. They were basically modifications to the molecule so that the liver does not get rid of testosterone quite so quickly. So the most commonly used uh, injectable regimens, um, the every 200 milligrams every two weeks, it is really what the package insert of commercial products say, but in many doctors that are not really that well educated are still using that dose. And I'm not saying that's a wrong thing to do because the companies are actually telling the doctors to, to use that for commercial products. But 100 to 200 milligrams every week is getting more and more uh, popular and common. And for men that are really highly adherent, highly compliant, and a lot of the men on Excel male are. They, it's amazing how, I mean, so men even inject every day uh, propionate <clears throat> because they, they say they feel better. So it really takes a lot of commitment but, uh, and a personality type for, for that. Um, but I'm seeing it done. So I inject uh, myself 75 milligrams twice a week uh, with a... Uh, with an insulin syringe, I'll show you a picture of, uh, that I took of myself. The Sustanon is not available in the United States every two weeks. The Vito uh, overseas is 1,000 milligrams every 10 weeks, but in the, in the US it was approved at 750 milligrams at week zero, four, and then every 10 weeks, um, 750 milligrams. <clears throat> so um, monitoring is important, checking uh, testosterone um, levels, um, uh, a peak testosterone 24 to 48 hours after injections. Most doctors don't do that. They actually uh, have you check your testosterone right before the next injection for the lowest um, possible level. 
uh, the dose needs to be increased is your blood testosterone at week six or eight uh, has not reached uh, levels above 600 or so. Um, there, if you decrease the dose and you check more frequently, you decrease the chances for peaks and valleys. So this is actually the injection techniques. You'll find some of these kind of interesting, hopefully. There's a, they're old school of thought, intramuscular injections, IM, deep IM. We used to use a one and a half needle, um, 23 gauge to inject in the, in the glutes, in the, in the butt. That's how I did it for, I don't know, 15 years. And I didn't know there was any other way because that's where I was told uh, back when I didn't know any better. The subcutaneous injections have been shown in the past four or five years to work really well, as well or better than intramuscular. And the shallow IM is a term that I created because that's where I do. I use shallow IM. I don't like subcutaneous injections under the skin because they, they cause me to have uh, redness and I don't like redness on my abdominal area. So um, the then and now. Then, uh, back in the days, and as I said, I used this technique um, for years. We used to have an 18 gauge, a big gauge, to load the, in, the testosterone inside the syringe, then switch the, the needle, because once it goes through um, a stopper, it becomes a little dull. We switched it to a 23 gauge for injection. So you have to use basically two needles and one injection syringe. Obviously, uh, 23 gauge in the butt it didn't hurt too much, but I, I have to say I wasn't looking forward to it every every two weeks like I used to inject uh, back in the days. But um, I had a problem uh, three four years ago. I had a neurological issue, and I hate to talk about my own health, but sometimes people don't understand how experimentation occurs. And in my case, it was the fact that I lost a lot of the function of my right hand. So I only really have a good hand, my left hand, to inject. Um, and I said, well, when am I going to do that? I don't want to depend on anybody. Uh, some men depend on their wives or girlfriends or boyfriends to, um, to get the injection. But I really think you should be independent. So I said, well, I have to find a way to inject um, with one hand. Um, and um, 27, and I tried all the different gauges, 27 gauge, half an inch. So range um, takes a while to load, but it really does not take more than you know, a minute and a half to load 50 milligrams to 75 milligrams. Less pain, you don't have to use a loading syringe. You waste less product. People forget that when we use a bigger uh, needle, bigger syringe, we tend to lose some testosterone in the tip and on the base of the, of the needle. Uh, you see it here in the picture, this the blue plastic um, uh, area here on the bigger, bigger needle. So um, we, we're basically are wasting less testosterone. We have uh, fewer supplies, good penetration. We have good data now. Uh, one, only one hand needed, no aspiration. That's the best part because the deep IM injections in the glutes or quads um, needed um, aspiration to make sure you didn't hit a vein or an artery or whatever. And, and the half an inch tiny needle, the, very, or subcutaneously or even shallow AM on, on the delts like I use, have very little chance for, for issues like that to happen. So that removes that, that requirement. Um, but however, I do advise that, you know, injecting more than 0.5 cc's in, with that insulin syringe tends to create a, a large volume under the skin or, or shallow AM that may um, create some scar tissue um, if you abuse it. So shallow I am, the altoid squats and glutes can be used, subcutaneous abdominal area. A lot of guys are using subcutaneous injections. The best data we have on efficacy, believe it or not, we have, uh, there was a study published uh, eight months ago or so in transgender uh, female to males um, using uh, the subcutaneous method. And uh, the study showed really good uh, blood levels um, with that method. So that's where we get the data from, believe it or not. The sites, um, as I, I said before, uh, the delts, uh, glutes, um, the upper, upper gluteus uh, area, and the quads, um, obviously the shadow IM on the delts and subcutaneous. So things have changed. I think the subcutaneous and shallow IM with an insulin range has made things a lot easier for many of us. I, I really don't, don't feel pain at all. And um, it's so much easier, and especially when it comes to supplies.